I bet you that you saw my first video, and don't worry, I'll get to that in a second. But hey, um, it's Gray. You know me as you know Undertale um person. Think I bet you saw me around once in your Instagram or somewhere on Discord. I don't know. You you might see me around a lot when it comes to Undertale community. So I bet you you briefly know who I am, but I'll give you a brief inter introduction. I'm it's Gray. I well I blew up because my good enemy meme thing still blowing up to this day. Um, I'm also known for making a lot of Undertale content on Instagram as well. This is since I you know I'm not that active on YouTube, but I'm, I still post. This video is gonna go over a lot of sensitive con well. <laughs> a lot of sensitive stuff in my opinion so i suggest that if you can't handle it i suggest clicking off but my last video should sum up of what i'm explaining in this one i'm editing this as i speak but let me just point this out um when it comes to me and my ums and whatnot it's mainly because when i was scripting this i was you know not i was like half awake when I looked at, when I came back, my script was like completely gone. Then I came back again, redid it, and it kind of looked scrunched up. So bear it with me when it comes to my speech and whatnot. When, if you, well, my last video, I'm going to have to say that it wasn't that good because of, because of that. And I missed a lot of important information that was like total blanks, which I understand why people couldn't understand it. I'm gonna link down um, Streamline Workshop's video on this when because she explained it a lot better than me. As I was recording this, literally I just finished watching her video and explained it a lot more better than me. I'm pretty glad that everyone's like speaking up about this. And she made a valid point that I'm gonna say in my video until Rooch actually cleans up and explains what the hell happened back then. We all have a valid reason to speak up about her. When it comes to her saying that she didn't know it was bad, she can't say it's bad, but then say that she apologizes for everything. You need to know what you're apologizing for in order to do that. I also, in my pinned comment, which I'm gonna display up here, um, I pinned someone, one of my friend's comments that helps me critique and point out some stuff. And she actually did make another apology on her Tumblr. I'll try and point that out in later in the video since I'm making these in parts where I can, you know, try and get everything that I need to say in this video. I'm gonna be, in this video, I will be redoing most of the parts of my last video, especially when it came to other AUs. I'm not just gonna, you know, put two AUs in there. I'm gonna use, put all of them in together and make sure that I get everything in there. Everything that we just done, I'm putting it in this one. I'm also gonna be critiquing parts of my own video. I'll try, this is like me commenting on my own self and Rouge at the same time. <laughs> so before I, since I introduced myself, let's get into an introduction of who the hell Rouge is. Rouge, as I'm speaking, is someone, uh, an adult for my own knowledge, someone in her 20s, who is Arrow and Ace, keep that in mind, which that's gonna be used later, or if you watch my last video, you'll know why I'm breaking this up, is a, past used to be you know undertale artists as well as in the bendy and ink machine fandom if you don't know what bending ink machine is um just, just look up the gameplay i think it'll just come up watch markiplier or, or dan cdm it, it should, their videos are most likely gonna help you understand the timeline and whatnot basically oh yeah and cuphead she's just watching some gameplay of that but she made the bendy and the quest for the ink machine au I'll give a brief summary of each AU that she's done. So don't worry. Um, you'll understand because mainly some of the timeline will help understand of why these situations are incorrect in many ways, such as PJ's daycare with Paper Fresh being included. You might look at me and think I'm hysterical, but as in the streams video and mine, you'll see why the hell that's incorrect. That's wrong. I don't think I, I I even went over PJ's daycare in my last video, which does kind of bother me as well. 
so yeah and a lot of people brought some other information in, in my last video that i wasn't even aware of until like i went into deeper research and i would when it came to the images i was just like astounded because i went deeper i scrolled 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 all that night and i was just in pure shock of what i was looking at i was just dumbfounded when Rouge was popular uh, in the Undertale community, she made a lot of NSFW with a impressionable kids audience because of her comics and whatnot. Her comics attracted kids from like, and it's surprising, but not surprising, but like eight to like 11, 12, 13 year olds, me being 13 as well, soon to be 14. But that's not the big point about me. It should be about her audience at that time. When I saw her comics, I was like 10, something like that. Uh, I just, whew. Yeah. Um, a lot of young people in that category of hers. And she made a lot of NSFW art with that audience being there. Now, I know Rouge can't control who sees her work. Even though she could just make, you know, a Patreon or something like that. Something else. But I already know that it's going to get leaked either way. Based off what I've seen on the internet. Like into NSFW artists. When it comes to Rouge and her art. She had a lot of weird undertones. And so those undertones and her art style made impressionable things that she said in her apology. Which I do not. Which I'm going to differ on that. It's pretty. Can't put it together. But. It's just kind of weird. Another thing that I know people are going to come at me for, which I've seen Streamline getting a little backlash from, people are saying that the drama was about 2018, 2000, like, really a long time ago, like two years. Thing is that it's not the point that the drama is old. That's not the point of us bringing this up. It's not the point of big creators bringing this up. <laughs> that The point of us bringing this up is that People are still looking at her art. People are still supporting her. People are still looking up to her. When you should not be looking up to her. She is not the person that you want to look up to. Yes, she cha she may have changed. Here's that thing. But we don't know her personally. All we know is that there's a lot of stuff going around. And we don't know how in the name of heck should we approach this. Which is what, what Streamline has come forth to do. Now, I'm going to take my turn and redo my video and get my point out there as to why you shouldn't support Rouge. Now, I'm going to list down all the AUs that she's created so you can have a proper visual of what these AUs had and why they are not, why their situations and problems are just not, betrayed the wrong way. Let me say that, betrayed the wrong way. First, let's go into PJ's Daycare. Quick summary. PJ's Daycare includes most of the ship kids combos that we know. The reason why I'm saying combos is because PJ, he, he isn't a combo. Um, PJ is just a fusion, in my um, from what I've seen, a fusion of error and inks, leftovers of a battle. Gradient is a combo. Blue screen is ship kid? I don't know. I never went into the blue screen's details, but there's a lot of people that we notice in her PJ's daycare AU. But just a lot of things that rub off in that AU that I'm going to explain. The storyline includes most of the AUs that we like as, you know, little kids, you know, in kindergarten. PJ being the main teacher. Most of the caretakers are adults, but excluding goth palette and cray who are 12 year olds 12 to like 13 year olds i don't know they just have a really young age range in the staff i don't know i never worked at daycare or whatnot basically the storyline starts with you know paper fresh um <coughs> grooming um yeah you heard me right um grooming um you might wonder what the hell i'm saying when i say it's grooming but don't worry, I'll put up some screenshots that will, you know, help me help you understand. M no, mind you that, you know, this is just my opinion. Y'all can give your opinions on this. 
So we see how PJ and Fresh interact in the PJ's daycare. You know, they have PJ sees Fresh as like his son in a way. <laughs> Fresh, on the other hand, wants to have a full blown relationship. Now, as you can see, PJ and, you know, Fresh, they're having a little argument about how Fresh wants to marry him. That's when someone suggests that, wow. You know, Fresh is older now. Would you marry him? That's when PJ internally starts to think about how Fresh was hot, yada, yada, yada. Fresh is like, you want to marry me now? And then it just rubs me off wrong about how that happened. I was like, okay, that's pretty weird. That's when PJ tries to calm him down and said, Fresh was like, you love me? And then PJ's like, of course I do. You just need to calm down. Like, PJ or someone, someone on the staff should have at least gently put him down into his place as a child and should have told him that that was wrong. Now, it's not, it's okay, it's normal for teenagers to fall in love with adults. And especially if the teenager knows that it's not okay and they're not going to act upon those actions, it's completely okay. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, it's completely fine. Just just don't go into a relationship with that adult, especially like, and this is where age gaps comes in in the modern time. Take a 12-year-old and 17-year-old, for example. When it comes to those two, it looks really weird. <laughs> That's basically a, 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 I don't know, any four-year-old who would fall for an adult, guessing that this happens in the universe. But goodness gracious, dear Lord, have mercy on me when I say that when PJ never explained to Fresh of why it was incorrect, it, it completely, like, I didn't even know that PJ didn't explain it to him. I thought PJ explained and that made me a little upset. But let me stop ranting about the grooming and the pedophilia ness. And let me go to the genocide thing. No, it's not there's no genocide. Trust me, there isn't. They're just kids. But Gino, he he was he's the youngest out of the bunch. In the in the Kinder AU, they are siblings. Error, fresh, and Gino. Gino being the oldest. He went when Eric gets a fever and has to be rushed to the hospital, Gino thought he actually failed as a brother. Like, mentally, he got messed up in the head. He went and was about to commit suicide. <laughs> you are not telling me uh, it's normal for a five-year-old to commit suicide. When they, ha like, I can understand that some five-year-olds are mentally developed faster when it comes to this stuff. But, dear goodness, um, that is not the way of how you can just go up in there and just draw this. You're like, yo, take this five-year-old about to commit suicide by jumping off a cliff. Well, now that's something to laugh at about, kids. I am one for dark humor and whatnot, but um, I don't think I could be joking about this, so I apologize dearly for that. This is not okay because people, the young audience will think that it's normal to be also suicidal, thinking about romanticizing it. And I've been seeing that a lot in the Friday Night Funkin' community with the Dementa. <laughs> I'm looking at you, you guys up in here, look, make kind of dumb in a way. Oh, okay. Just got a little, take a, a deep breather. <laughs> now, let's get on to the Nerd and Jock. Goodness, I'm trying to take this in one go for the AU, so bear with me on this. The Nerd and Jock AU was permanently about of how, you know, most kids, most adults, they were adults, teachers, student coaches, yada, yada, yada. We have... Palette, who's a cheerleader, and we have Goth, who is a librarian. The two of, or well, like any little high school romance thing, you see them, they're in love, you know. Now, the plot line of this AU is that 
Well, I just explained it, but here's here peer bear with me. Based off what I'm hearing is that, and I'm saying this allegedly. Do not say I said this, okay? They're saying that Palette is older and Goth the Librarian is still a teenager, which I can see because hear me out. Now, here's where things get a lot of twisted. Now, Rouge deleted all of her Undertale comics off her Tumblr, and, but the images are still up on Google. You could easily just look up her NSFW and they'll just be like right there. Or you could just look up that Nerd and Jock KU NSFW and it should be there as well. Now, there's two right situations. I cr I'm correcting myself here. Two. Now, you might be wondering, what's the second situation? I'll get to that. The first one was with Palette and Goth. Palette, you know, sees, friend zones him. We see that a lot in most of the art with Palette and Goth. Him being a dumb bimbo blonde. <laughs> you see that on Adrian and Gress. Like, they're completely identical. Now... God takes it to the extreme and magically just just assaults him. And it was just so random. Palette, the next day, he, he feels numb inside. I coming from understand where that was going. And so I was like, okay, that's reasonably understandable of why Palette feels this way. Now, Goth tries to off himself from guilt. I was puzzled at this. Puzzled. And I was pretty upset when Pallet was clearly said that he was glad it was anyone. But it was he was glad that it was him and not anyone else. Like, uh, I'm, I don't know if I'm reading this correct. Because, you know, I have... Bad ring problems, but I'm good. That's not, uh, that's not nice. Um, goodness, I think I'm just going to move on to the second one of what I'm talking about. So, you guys, I forgot. His, I almost forgot this this baby. <laughs> this is actually one of my other favorite characters. Sill. Sill, if I'm correct, is a paper fresh kid. I forgot, to be honest. Um, I'll correct myself if it is. But in this AU, there's P him and PJ are siblings. And so PJ is like the older jerk brother, which I stand rude on because, you know, PJ is is canonically a jerk. And so let's just take that in mind when I, when I explain the PJs, which will come up next after I talk about this whole thing. Goodness, my face is red. Um... So, Sill and... I forgot who the other dude is. Quill? Oh, yeah, Quill. Sill and Quill, they're a, they're a platonic couple. But sooner or later, due to Sill being hinted ace after a couple of axes, he, um... Because after someone, you know, just shows him straight up, you know, P-word... He kind of freaks out and has a different image of what P is. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying, I'm not, I'm trying to get my money. You know what I mean? Um, sorry about that. Um, but I will be cursing. Don't worry. <laughs> um, um, after that, P, him and him, PJ and Quill, they have a little competition for Sill's appreciation and love. That's when later on they settle things out. But then, um, still tells PJ about how he's questioning his sexuality, questioning of how he feels when it comes to being, um, ace. PJ nods and agrees. He was like, okay, I won't tell Quill anything. But then he has an imaginary thing about how if Quill ours still. <laughs> now, I don't know if this counts, but it's definitely weird of how you're just going to put a depictive drawing of, the t of you know, Quill assaulting 
someone. Like, that's just, like, why? I don't, you just could have wrote it down. That would have been better at least. I don't need to see that. No one needs to see that. Especially your young audience. I don't need to, none of us need to see that. No one needs to see that. No one needs. To, no, I don't. I do not need a mental image of this stuck in my head. I don't need to have to go to sleep at night wondering where young me went wrong. Looking at your posts, like no, thank you. Let's get on to Vampire First now. Vampire First is basically Hotel Transylvania, but the Arrow Inc. family. <laughs> Just think of that. Just with the mom present. Basically that. So, we have... I'm not going to go on and say the dumb names for their, for the AU. So, we're just going to go with um, Paper Jam and Fresh. Because you already know what AU we're on. It's pretty dumb. But if I do switch to the names, I hope you guys know who I'm talking about. Basically, Paper pretends to be drunk. Gets Fresh under the influence. Then, magically, out of nowhere, not a surprise, assaults him. Woohoo! What's this? Like, round three? Well, two and a half, because I don't know if that still and quill thing counts, but, dear goodness, this is a lot to take in. Whew, I need a breather. Basically, um, I'm going to give my opinion on this. As someone who's been assaulted not under the influence which has been assaulted and still going through this traumatic phase this is <laughs> i cannot explain of how draining this is just having to look at this like goodness lord can you go a week without because she she could have just not gone a day without having all these she says in her and her apology on her Tumblr that she no, she didn't know that it was okay and then straight up apologizes for it. What are you apologizing for if you don't know it, what it is? You say in your recent apology from January this year that you that you're that you it was because your country. What country? <laughs> now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to have her fully expose herself. But at least give us, like, have one more to go. So, let's go. We have Little Red Jamie Hood. You know what? Let's just do this. Little Red Riding Hood, but just have the Eric family and Fresh. This is what basically what I'm going to do. Basically, Fred PJ is Little Red Riding Hood. You know, that chick that runs into the woods with no parent supervision. Her mom was like, okay, we're going to give this pie to your grandma. Oh, my God. That voice crack. Sorry. Um, that's when Fresh comes out, he's playful and whatnot. PJ doesn't mind, but then they I don't know if this is a part of the comic page, but either way, just incorrect. PJ is depicted as like still young. To be honest, in all all the art that I've seen, except for some in PJ's daycare and some of her SMW art, mainly most of her art is just PJ looking young. And I'll get to that next, finally. When it comes to uh, PJ and Fresh's relationship and that, and PJ's, um, I don't know, man, just the rule of it running, could I you? Um, Fresh assaults him yet again. No surprise. At this point, it shouldn't be a shocker for you guys. But yeah, mainly because of his wolf instinct and him being in so-called heat, he assaults PJ. But no, like, no matter what you're on, no matter what influence, that shouldn't be an excuse. Like, no matter what condition, no matter what place of time you are, you shouldn't be assaulting anyone. <laughs> if you've been assaulted, please, I beg of you. Once people start coming up with their story, other people, you'll be confident enough to tell your own. That's what I've been seeing. Like, look at the bad baby situation. If you don't know who that is, it's the Catch Me Outside girl. You'll see why this relates. Basically, when it comes to bad baby, um, Hannah, someone who went to the ranch, she recently came out of her being assaulted. And she has... And then bad baby spoke of her situation when it came to the ranch, which is being sexually assaulted. 
mainly these two girls have been affected by Dr. Phil. Now, the reason why this connects to Rouge is because mainly people in the Edersol community, when they were kids, like when we were all like little kids, you're going to see, you can tell that people thought it was normal. People thought that being in an abusive or in a, um, a situation where, where consent is, um, no consent is okay, to make it think that it's all right. Being in an abusive, toxic a uh, relationship where you're when you're sexually abused is not okay. It's just not right, and that's why you should not say. I hate when people, most people say in some situations that affect fiction does affect reality. So let me put it like this: your attraction to Nightmare England, the bad guys gang, isn't real. You know why? Because they're fiction. They aren't real. So your love for them isn't real. My love for science is poof, gone. It's nowhere. It's gone. You know why? Because he's not real. Now, now that we're done with that, let's get into the Fanon and Canon PJs. To be honest, this full heartedly, you can skip this section. I'm just giving my opinion of how Rouge depicted PJ. So you can just go to the little timestamps that I've created um, in the description to help you just skip by into this chapter and just go to the next topic that I'm going into, which is going to be about December 30th, 2020. That will be if you watched my last video yet again. I suggest looking at that. Now that we have people who skipped away let's talk about fanon and canon pj now you might be wondering why who the hell is fanon pj fanon pj is rouge's pj <laughs> like you can't tell me that this grumpy asshole is this cutie pie well not cutie pie i think you're disgusting a disgusting roach but you know <laughs> people have their depictions to be honest um Oh boy, how will I say this? This is explained in her recent apology. And I'm going to place it right here. She blames her art style, which, I can, which I'm which i going to have have partly vouch on her for that. That she says that she makes her characters look young. The reason why I'm putting my input into this one as well is because you, you if you guys know me from Instagram or know my art style in general, you see how I make men like hella buff. Like, look at my ship kid for, like, look at Mona. He looks like a young-ass adult, and he's 15. Now, don't get me wrong. I get, I'm going to say, like, publicly, I get mistaken for a 20-year-old, 18-year-old, all of that. Only, that's only because of my height and some of my facial features. When you look at Rouge's art, her art depicts PJ because of the facial features and how small he is. That he is like a top, like a kid, like like nine year old, it's like a, it's like a like an elementary schooler. Then you, then you see the art, the NSFW. Oh yeah, mind you that um she actually drew NSFW of PJ when he was a baby. <laughs> I didn't know that this was PJ as a baby. I thought that was just him normally, until someone pointed that out, and then immediately I was like, wait a minute, that's him as a baby. That made me even more shocked. Because they said, oh yeah, that's him when he's like two to three years old. And I was like, what? Speak again? That was him as like a two to three year old? You're joking, right? Like, I was in utter shock. I, well, they, it, it should be right there. The, the picture I'm talking about. But goodness lord. I did not know that, that like 2000 something Roots was sick in the head. And as well as the fact that she said that she's a better person and she knows what's wrong and right. Like, I, whoo, I don't think so. If she knows what's wrong and right, then I suggest that she comes out with like a, like a better apology. Like, she just gave like a Tony Lopez apology. Like, we're just missing the notes pads, and then bam, we have a Tony Les Lopez apology. But that was basically how I think her recent apology came to. Ken and PJ is more grumpy, more 
you know, he he's not the person to mess with. The only person that he cares about is Amani, his canon partner. Um, I'll just place a picture image of them. But the reason why there's two bitches there is because Amani, she's a shapeshifter who, you know, she has many different forms, actually. I think I find her character pretty cool. And she has a form where she looks exactly, <laughs> exactly like VJ. That, that actually makes me crack up a bit. Um, my friend, um, they were like, oh, yeah, did you know that Amani has a form where she looks exactly like BJ? I was like, wait, what? Anyways, and then, and they have a little kid. I forgot who the kid is, not gonna lie. I think it was, like, paper coin or something like that. Don't want to get into that, though. Um, Finn and PJ, he's a ball of light that I will immediately smack into the sun, dear God. I don't like him. If anything, I would go for Ken and BJ eating every day. I'd rather be treated like a jerk than some tw- some 20-year-old who looks like my little brother to try and F me. Like, the hell? I am, like, I, I am not trying to be the next PJ, the next PJ getting accused of such. Which is mainly on his part, because, you know, he never made it clear that he didn't, like, fresh in that manner. Now, when I, now, <laughs> oh, tongue twister, um... Now let's get to December 30th. Alright, let's get into the... Ooh, okay, this one is gonna... I'm gonna write this a little frisky on this one. So, just so we know, this is all alleged, okay? All alleged. Whatever I'm saying right now, from this point on, is alleged. Except for when we get, when we get to her apology. This is all legend. Y'all didn't hear this from me. I'm just the uh, I'm just Casper running around. This is all coming from Anonymous. The original poster, I'm blocking out their name. The reason why the screenshots are really dingy is because Kuka Pro is such a dimly and wants to blur out when I try to zoom in on the picture. I'll try and make it less less more you know, HD for you guys, but I'm just gonna say it right now that the screenshot, these screenshots are, like, from that day, and for the record, um, the reason why I'm not gonna be mentioning the the original poster of this is because they took it down once Rouge got their apology out, or their so-called apology, more of, like, them talking about it, because, you know, I don't think it's, it, she didn't apologize anywhere. In my in my full part opinion, I could see why the post take it down because most like most people were most likely defending Rouge as soon as this apology came out, which does rub me off wrong. I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna blame them because they're most likely younger than me, or they're just immature teens who you know still defend Rouge. <sighs> now reminder, before we continue, you can still like Rouge's art style. I can't lie. Her art style is awesome. But damn well, you're not going to take some damn inspiration from her. <laughs> you can like her art style, but don't you damn take some inspiration from her comics. And whatnot. You can redraw some of the comics if they're, you know, appropriate. And, you know, not romanticizing shit. But I suggest that if you want to redraw some scenes, I don't mind that. I don't think anyone minds that. Most likely, no one will care. <laughs> Especially if the Rouge is, you know, white knights coming out to rescue you. So, let's get on to what happened that day. That day, I was scrolling through Instagram. I was like, woohoo, what should I do today and not upload on YouTube for another century? I come across a user who was talking about the Great Rouge, and, I was, and it was a call-out post. And I was like, oh, what's this? We're bringing up Rouge. Now, this was at the time where me and a friend, an old friend, we originally was going to post a video about Rouge. And, but the thing is that me and him are not friends anymore. We are not associating anymore. His ass blocked me. He, he's claiming that, you know, um, he lost all of his friends when originally, you know, that was him pushing us all away. Um, had to find out by someone else that he didn't want me there in the first place. <laughs> um, so once that happened, I discarded the video and just went on with my day. 
that's when the call-up post came. And I was like, all right, what's this about? I click it, and it was grooming allegations. And when I said, it colored me stoked, that I was not surprised. I was not surprised that Rouge was going out grooming someone. And I read through the screenshots, I read through anything, everything, and I sent it to non-artistic draws. Um, if you don't know them, um, you might know it from all um, past videos that I am not going to talk about for many reasons. But yeah, um, their their art is inspired by the Great Rouge, and, and you know, better. I suggest you go check them out. <laughs> um, they're. I will <laughs> goodness gracious. Um after both of us talking it out and saying that, you know, everything was chill, a couple of days later, like a week later or so, now I see Jaw sent it to me something from Twitter says, you know, I don't have a Twitter account. My parents don't allow me on that. My older my old older on my sister comes to me and says Hey, Rouge uploaded something talking about this. And I was like, oh. So I was like, all right, I'll 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 check it out. A couple of days later, I check it out because I'm making my first video about this. And I'm just going to have to say it right now. That apology. <laughs> um, that apology. Oh. Oh. Um, making me a little doozy. Um, it's definitely something that you can look at. Not like apology, but she's taking forth and defending herself, which I could, you know, I have to respect her on that. She's trying to not have those allegations on her name. But, um, yeah, I would rather not go forth of how I feel about it until we get to this. So I'll just give my opinions on the post. In summary of what happened, it was that Rouge, I'm going to put a list here, so bear with me. She allegedly, and again, I'm saying this allegedly, she allegedly drew someone's OC that was 13 or something like that, a minor. That all that, that's all that matters. A minor's Osona was someone. She also drew um, their, her Sona with their Sona. Then she went on to send sexual messages to them on Discord. Now, note this is on Discord. This is on Discord. Once the apology comes out, she um, talks about and set, states that that was someone who, that was a fake of her. Now, I don't know if Rooch has Discord. So, I don't know if that was actually a fake or someone tried to pose as her. I don't know. I don't know if she ever had a Discord server or something to back herself up on to prove that that isn't her. So, we don't, ha- we don't have an idea. But I don't think... Here's my, here's my opinion. I don't think this person who made the original post did it for clout. That's all I know. No one, anyone with common sense wouldn't just point out fingers to Rouge because of the past stuff she did and say, yep, groomer. I know that in the beginning of the segment, I said, color me stoked that she, you know, I'm not surprised that she was a groomer, but I'm not gonna, you know, full out say that I was waiting for this moment. I'm not going to say that I was waiting for her to get called out for this. I was just shocked that she actually did it. Now, when now let's get to the apology. Thank God, I'm almost done with this. I'm saying this right now. The apology that she's made in the past and recent time are not apologies. From what I've gathered, she did not say any type of I'm sorry, I apologize, nothing. As someone who's been through the things that she's been romanticizing, she did not say sorry, and I do not accept her dumb apology. If she, if someone gives me some type of link to where she points out and thing, she says that she's sorry, and it's decent, then maybe 
something will change in my mind. But for now, no way in heck am I just going to say, yeah, I accept our apology. Like, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not how it's going to work. So let's get over to it. I'm going to put up the screenshots just so you know what I'm talking about. So pause to read, please. Like, I'm begging of you. Because I want you to point out where she said, I'm sorry. Yeah, again, Paul, I apologize dearly for the poor screenshots. I apologize so bad. Like, these screenshots are horrible. Okay, I'm just not realizing this as I was putting up the screenshots, but she said this was going on for five years. If it was going on for five years, how come it's going on? It should have been done with that too. <laughs> that astounds me. If people are still getting up on you for something you've done five years ago, there's something clearly wrong on your end. There's something clearly wrong on your end. You, we shouldn't be going on about this, Rude. <laughs> Please. Nine year old me shouldn't have which would be looking at you as my as my idol <laughs> and now I'm sitting up in here thirteen ranting about you. This I'm making this awareness video about you, girl. Come on. <laughs> this shouldn't be going on. This should not be going on for so long. Um so if you read the screenshots, you can see of how she's you know trying to her best and she's claiming a lot so let me take a a small little break to you know wind up my little mind about what the heck she's talking about because it's been a, like a dry minute ever since i read these screenshots i read these before mind that i read this for my first video but i'm making this a month later like two months later actually in march and i'm rereading these because I, I think my video came out like Somewhere in February, somewhere in that time area, I'll check. Okay, I'm back. Um, basically, she talks about how she has a past pro stripper and whatnot. Don't know if she still is, but ugh, I'm just tired of this. I'm tired of how this is going on for five years. And like I said earlier, if this has been going on for five years and people are still coming at you with it, there's clearly something wrong on your end. There's clearly something wrong that you're approaching this. People may have different tones when it comes to their um, speaking. Like, I remember how when I said in my last video or my past rants that I've done, people point out about how when I'm upset, when I say I'm upset, I act more calm. That's mainly because when, like, I can't just scream into my phone because, you know, I do not want people to be like, okay, time for you to go back to the him into a hospital. <laughs> I do not want that. I usually try and keep my tone down when I when it comes to me being angry or I just go dead silent in modern time. When I look at Rouge's post about this, I see her trying to approach this in a calm yet mature and serious manner. But then again, it just seems like her just trying to brush it off and it seems pretty rushed in my opinion, even though it did take a week or so. Most likely she just caught wind of it like a day before her so-called apology came up and that's when she, you know, was like, okay, time to throw this out here. So coming from someone who's been through one of these topics and I made this clear on streamlines and when I commented on her posts, I made it clear that, and I'm posting my comment up here so you guys can tell. If you have not been through one of these things, and this is me explaining my comment if you couldn't understand me. If you haven't been through one of these things, you are not allowed to accept her apology. You are not allowed to accept anyone's apology if you're not the victim. When it comes to Tony Lopez and his victims... You are not allowed to say, I'm sorry. You're not allowed to accept it if you're not one of his victims. Same thing when Larry put the cancel soundtrack out and, the, and he opposably said that the victims were okay with it. And when the victims tweeted out and they're like, no, that we didn't, we didn't say it was okay. We weren't laughing at this. You are not allowed to accept the Larry's apology, except if you aren't the girls who are affected by their abuser. If this makes, I'm making this clear for everyone. 
Rouge made this apology for everyone who's seen her work and people who are affected by these situations in real life. If you were affected by all these stuff, you are allowed to say your manner in this apology. It's, and if you have been through these things, I dearly apologize that you had to went, go through this. No one should have gone through this. <sighs> this is just... Oh, I'm just ready to make this video over. I'm giving this my opinion clear out. The apologies both sucked. The reason why I didn't put up the 2019 post is because I could not find a link anywhere. I would have I would have reached out to Streamline, but you know, I don't think she wants people contacting her about her videos and whatnot. And if I asked for her in the comments, it would be kind of weird. But yeah, I did read the apology and it sucked. <laughs> it sucked so bad. This apology is even worse, the recent one. All of this should not, if, like I said, like, I'm gonna say it the thousandth time. If something is going on, and it's been dragging out for five years, there's definitely something wrong on your end. There's definitely something wrong that you're appro approaching this. Some people need ex explanations, because Rouge is acting as if this should have been done a while ago, when it's clear that she can't escape this if there's something wrong with her. People have different points and views of how they see people. And reading this apology makes me irritated because there could have been a lot of things. Starting off with, I'm sorry. <laughs> and a type of, I'm sorry. She's sticking up for her younger self, which sucked. Every one of her comments sucked. Now, her art doesn't suck. That's, I can say that. Her art doesn't suck. But, um, most of her comments romanticizing, depicting all these sensitive topics sucked. I clear, I'm pretty sure, in my opinion, that Tumblr, you can private your account. Or that you could, I don't know if it works like those websites or anything, where you can set off a warning i don't know we can't check now because you know she deleted all of her old posts and whatnot i think she's in the stickman fandom or something like that i have no idea most likely sonic i don't know I, I just really don't know but for now we can't see her in any of her old posts but um i'll try my best to get all of these images of where you can find her and see the, her old art. And just to end off this video, um, I'm just gonna put a little PSA out there. Um, don't attack Rooch for anything. You can rant about her in the comments, but don't go to her Twitter, Tumblr, and all that to just talk smack about her. That is not what we're gonna do. Okay? We all make that clear? We're we making that clear? Okay, good. I promise I'll post something that isn't this soon. I promise you. I've been trying to get enough motivation, but if you want to see more content from me, I suggest going to my Instagram or my TikTok. I really don't know. Those are like the Instagram's like the main area where I'm at. Or you could just find me in the um JLHS server. That's I'm there as well, but you know. Um, yeah, this is, I'm mainly promoting that server. It's pretty neat and you can see everyone there. It's pretty chilly and everyone's pretty nice. Just don't bother the mods where they, where, where you come from, please. Um, well, this is in a way to end out the video. I hope you guys, you know, stay away from Roach's art. And another reason why I made this video again is because, like I said in my comment on Streamline's, um, video, 
the reason why we're both making this video, why anyone's making a PSA about her, is because people who are new to the fandom and they're young are going to think that these things are okay, okay? I don't want anyone trying to say, but what, like, no, these are little kids looking at her art and thinking all of these things are in, are okay. Many people from the Undertale fandom went out and think this was okay. I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay. This is another reason why I'm not going to let my damn mean alters damn kids on the internet too early. You can see how messed up it is. <laughs> Now, I will see you next time, and hopefully, um, yeah. But again, no arguing in these damn comments. Please.